What's up guys? Nick's loading the truck up. We're getting ready to head down to Missouri. Nick and Keith have both got tags and me and Ted are gonna go down there and try to help those guys and film those guys here in the next couple of days. Hopefully get a couple deer down. Yep, hopefully. We really need meat in the freezer now. I did kill that buck out west a couple weeks ago, but I was in a CWD zone and I mentioned that in the video and I got his lymph nodes tested. We ran into one of the wardens on the way out of the unit. I was actually looking for a place where I could sample that buck's lymph nodes. He took them and had them tested, and it took about a week or so for me to get the results back. So the entire time I'm bringing all that debone meat back, I'm processing it in the kitchen and putting it in, in the freezer in there, expecting that we're gonna be able to eat this deer because he told me like the prevalence was really low in that unit and he didn't expect us to have a positive result. But turns out my test came back on that buck and he's got CWD. So what the heck do you do now? I guess just dispose of the meat. Do you eat the meat? I've heard some people say eat it. I've heard some people say get rid of it. Yeah, I've got to contact the DNR, which I already did, and I'll figure out what I can and cannot do with that meat. But what the heck would you guys do? Answer in the comments down below. Would y'all eat it or would you dispose of it? A lot of people, including Jay, said he probably wouldn't eat it yeah. if it was the CWD positive deer. And I'm on the fence. I ain't really sure yet what I'm going to do with it. But as y'all saw from the footage, this buck looks perfectly normal. He did travel like two miles that morning. Outside of that, he was acting just like a normal deer. And we had no expectations that he was gonna have CWD, but turns out he does. We gotta figure out what to do with him next. And if we end up getting rid of all this meat, we're gonna be dealing with an empty freezer once again. There's only one solution to that, and that just means that Doe's gotta get it. Yep, and you've got a bonus tag. I got a bonus tag. And just, a buck tag. Just for such an occasion. Yeah, so we're gonna go to Missouri and try to fill that freezer up with some deer that don't have CWD. I am rolling into Missouri here. Nick is not too far behind me. We are heading down for five or six days of hunting here. Me and Nick have tags, and then I believe Orb will have a tag as well. Seems like we've got a cold front and some fall weather moving in. It's pretty much been hot everywhere we've been up to this point. So we're looking forward to some cooler weather and looking forward to get back in the woods. Should be at camp here in the next 30 or 40 minutes, and uh, we'll see you there. Nick and I are just getting some stuff organized here at camp. We just made a loop around some of the areas that we're going to be hunting. I think probably 94, 95 degrees right now, but tonight there's a cold front moving in and the next four or five days are looking much better than what we've been dealing with so far this season. Might have some rain to deal with here in a little bit, but we're going to run into a couple different spots and try to just find some sign, get a little head start for the morning. We've seen a lot of acorns around, but we're just going to try to find some feeding sign. We're going to go get in the woods and we're going to go figure it out. It's a brand new area. None of us ever hunted it before. I've never hunted it before. I've never even held a tag outside of the state of Texas before. So That's awesome. We're just going to jump in there and see try what's to happening. Make a harvest. Yeah. We're just going to try to stab something with one of these dinner sticks here. Hold it up. So he's along this path here, following this ridge. And we haven't been finding just a ton of sign like rubs or anything, but there is no shortage of acorns here in this little stretch. I mean, it, this whole road is just littered with acorns all up and down it. I mean, it's been raining, but it sounds like it's raining in the woods just by how much it's falling. We've been checking like caps of them to see if it's deer popping caps on them and eating these acorns here and finding some like that, but not just a whole, a whole bunch of it. So we're gonna keep pushing down this ridge. Hopefully see something, at least getting some sign. So we're just gonna keep on pushing. Too. <laughs> we did too. And it didn't really rain yeah. that much. It's starting to rain that I think it's low. about to come. Yeah. I got my rain fly open on my tent, so. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, a good first evening of hunting in Missouri then. Yeah, pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was God, great. Just still just like 85 out there. About as muggy oh, yeah. as can be. But hey, better weather's coming. 
We're in some deer at least. At least we kind of ran into some. We'll be after them in the morning. We will. Sleeping oh. bag not bad. Sleeping pad a little wet. A little wet. A little wet. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what happens when you leave your rain fly open. Oh, I've definitely slept in way worse. Oh man. Oh, we're good. Good. We're good. We're good. That tent will sleep. Oh, that'll sleep. We'll go ahead and close the rain fly now. I'll throw that little that little chamois towel in there and we'll be good to go. That's nothing like Okinawa was. <laughs> fresh rubs and fresh sign yesterday midday we get in this morning and someone was pulled into that spot so we're on like plan G right now but, but we just got backed up to this bluff right here to where our winds blowing out over this steep bluff and we just found the first little bit of buck sign pretty stagnant stale looking stuff up top it's all just monotonous the same age timber that's young oaks that aren't even producing and we're pretty sure we did bump a deer that was right on the edge of some of that stuff on our way in though. It didn't blow, it sounded like something just bounded. We're in a better position now to where our wind is sailing out over this to where we can get out to this point and then work back into the wind on some of these slopes and fingers that are out over this main creek. Scout it out and work back to the car if nothing else works out. Making do with where we're at now. There's someone in the first spot, but we're, we're just hunting it through, trying to find some more stuff. Bisecting this ridge, there's an old fence line, and then on the other side, there's a bunch of spice bush, shrub, real thick on that other side, and this big open white oak timber on this side. A huge white oak back behind me here, and this scrapes on a dogwood right under it. There's a decent amount of sign here, enough to, enough for us to come back in here and hunt if we need to, if we don't find anything else. This is so fresh, still got flies on it. I think we finally found the feed tree right here behind us, Warren Womack. Easing along the top of this ridge for the last hour or so. And we're finding gobs of acorns. There's white oaks all over this ridge. And there's occasional rubs down through it and decent amount of deer sign. But we just got up here in the center of the ridge and there's two or three of these huge oaks that you can see right here behind me. And these things are raining. Two dozen piles of droppings underneath this tree. Some of them are super, super fresh, like the flies are on them and it's wet from where the deer was here earlier today or last night. We got a couple rubs over here that have been whipped up pretty hard and then a scrape right over my shoulder right underneath of this tree. You might even be able to see it back here. This is a good spot. Me and Keith are trying to figure out which tree we're gonna get set up in for the evening. Then we're gonna jet back out and get some lunch and be right back in here tonight. Hopefully Keith can fill a tag, boy. Cause he ain't gonna be picky. He's gonna shoot a slick if one comes in. He's grinning back here right now. Right here's the feed tree, if you will, that's dropping all the acorns. There's a scrape right at the base of it right there. And then right here is where we're gonna set up. We're gonna get up about 15 feet up in that tree to where we can shoot that thing all around it. Cause there's, that's where all those droppings and acorns are at. Our wind is going to be coming just like this. We're in the midst of a pretty serious gom right now. Somebody asked the other day what the heck gom means. This is exactly it. Yeah, when we're hunting like a mile or two back, if we still hunted all the way back there, it would take us like six hours to get there. So this is what we do for about 80-90% of the trip. 
is we got them. I have some other words for it also, but they're not very PC. It's like a staircase, Keith. What happened to you? One of these crooking, I don't trust caterpillars. Got stung too many times by them. By a caterpillar? Oh yeah. Really? The white furry one. Oh, and you found the creepiest picture possible to send me. Ted texted me last night and he said, should we get out and run them off? <laughs> so, run who off? The person that was slipping up into camp last night. I think somebody creeped up in here in our camp or was about to. So I texted these guys and I was like, I hear somebody walking up on us and I'm on the edge over there. Where I heard it coming from. <laughs> You're on the edge three feet from Keith's tent. So um, <laughs> they're gonna get me first. So I I girded up and had my knife and I, I was just laying there waiting for some stuff to pop off. When you're out here in the wilderness like this, you never know. I got up this morning and you had this thing cracked about six inches open, this hatch, and your feet were just hanging right out of the back. I know. Well then that's when Nick was texting me, it was like that all night. So I'm like, oh god. <laughs> this thing's not locked up. I'm like, if there is somebody here, I'm screwed. They're, They're just going to grab your feet and rip <laughs> yeah. you right out of the back, me out of the back of my car. Freaking me out. I don't know why I think of stuff like that. Something well, I'm, wrong with me. I'm, I'm glad you let me know when you're thinking of it. Well, I didn't want to be the only, <laughs> the only one out there worried. No, you gotta, <laughs> What's your plan for the night? Oh, me and Ted found a whole mess of sign up on this big ridge. And we're going to go in there with our little saddles. It'll be my first saddle hunt, so that'll be exciting. Pretty sure it's a whole passel of does, and we're gonna see if we can't put a couple holes in one of them. What's a passel? I don't know. A How bunch. Many is that? I'd say a passel. I don't know. A passel is know. a passel's five or more. You can fact check me on that, but I I say that's a passel. What did yeah. you call your tent earlier? My billet. A billet. Your billet? Yeah, my billet over there. Getting my billet. You was afraid a coon was gonna creep up in your billet last night. <laughs> that would have been the coon up to your billet. <laughs> worst thing that ever could have happened. And I don't even know why a billet's called a billet. That's just what old timers back home say about their bed. You know, getting their billet at night, so it's my billet. Same reason I call a skunk a polecat. I don't know why it's a polecat, but I call it a polecat. Pole it's just Texan is what it is. I've seen polecat before. Polecat Mountain. Right next maybe. to Bearback Mountain? You went broke back mountain, is what you mean? <laughs> right next to I, th I thought you were a fan of cinema, Warb. <laughs> Going up the last leg of this walk in, heading into the same spot where it came in this morning. Found all that sign. Got the frame back on. We feel pretty confident something's going to come in. We're just now getting up onto the top of this ridge. Should be set up in the next 30 to 45 minutes. It's 520 now. This is the tree we picked this morning. 14 yards, there's a little scrape down here. There's a big white oak, one of the bigger ones we've seen. That's where the most dense feeding sign was under that tree that we've seen so far. This ridge also has the most mature white oaks that we've seen in any area. And on top of that, it's the most diverse area we've seen. On these east facing hillsides, we got these spice bush thickets back behind us, which we really haven't seen in any other areas. There's a lot of spots we've been through that have been really stagnant woods, same age, timber and stuff like that, but here there's actually mature white oaks that are all dropping. Past where we stopped this morning, there's a northeast facing bowl, and then there's a couple more bowls past that. And from what we can see, there's some of that spice bush thicket back there, and then stuff that we didn't walk through this way as well. It's all thick on the back side. We're just gonna sit tight and try to stay pretty still because we're not super high up, and this ridge back here is pretty much puts us right in the line of sight for deer that'll be walking to the top. So ideally they come down. We tied up a branch right here to give me an easier shot, but to still give us some cover up here. I'll probably have to kneel against the tree and get pretty low to actually have a shot. And they're probably gonna be pretty close shots as well. So we're gonna have to sit tight and make sure we're not getting caught up here. Got a couple hours to sit. Feel pretty confident something's gonna be moving through here tonight.
rain shower going to get them up out of their billets this evening. That's right. It's good to bring a redneck with you every once in a while. It's going to make the it's going to make a difference in the hunt there, I think. It might. my limb was gonna hit so then I had to drop at the last second and she was getting out of that lane I just I rushed it and she was 12 yards too and I should have just put it way lower but the first time I've done that that was I don't hey man it's just part yeah, of it it's part of it learning and mm -hmm. that's all you can do oh yeah just learn and keep going yeah. ended up shooting her it was probably 12 or 13 yards where she was standing Rush the shot, hit her in the spine. She started going down the hill a little bit. I just climbed down, walked over to her and finished her at four steps. It went pretty quick, relatively. It could have been way worse, but it's the first time I've had to do that. I'm really not a huge fan of it, but. No, it stinks. It's part of it though. Yeah. But she's laying dead over there, so we do have a deer down. We do. And still have a buck tag so we're just gonna sit it I don't even know if I should have taken the shot necessarily but she moved that was a difficult situation because mm -hmm. she moved at the very last minute I watched the footage like did you she stopped when you grunted mm -hmm. and then you were getting in position and as you were doing that she started to move so like as you're as you're squeezing the shot off she's moving yeah and on top of that your cam hits this it does yeah yeah so which is I something we're that. worried about that's why we tied mm -hmm. that up there but if it wouldn't have been tied it would have entirely been in the way and i think i just i definitely underestimated where that was or just completely overlooked that i could feel it touch it and i thought if i pulled off i could still at least get that shot and it wasn't it wasn't ideal but like i said i'm glad i could get down and finish it pretty quickly so yeah Hey man, it ain't ideal, but that's your first out-of-state deer. It is. It is my first out-of-state deer. <laughs> Earliest I shot a deer too, first September deer. Yeah. Right. Can't be too unhappy with it. That's, that's good. We're eating meat. We got meat on ice. <laughs>
just left a light here. Just had three more does move in from pretty much that same spot, go right through that same lane where I shot that one. They're slowly working off now down the ridge. Probably climb down here in the next few minutes and go over and check her out. There she is. First out of state deer, first September deer, first deer with that new bow. Like we had said, it wasn't a completely ideal situation, but I think there was a lot of takeaways for myself from that. We're gonna get her cut up here. I'm gonna, before we do anything else, I'm gonna get her telechecked in, and then we're gonna probably debone all the meat, get it in game bags, and haul out of here. Gom out of here, actually. Yes, we're gonna gom. <laughs> oh, we're gonna gom. We are right gonna gom. Right down through the pig pen down there. Yep. Timber deer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big woods acorn deer. Mm -hmm. Coming right to that tree, too. Yep. That's something that we should touch on real quick, guys. Uh, we talked about it earlier, talked about Warren Womack a bunch on our podcast, how he's discussed hunting feed trees for years, and he's killed hundreds of deer with mm -hmm. a stick bow, hunting feed trees. One of the big takeaways I took away from Warren several years ago was that he hunts feed trees in areas like this where there's heavy mass crops. And that's one of the big challenges with hunting big woods especially when all the acorns are dropping it's mm -hmm. like there's a lot of deer in here just yeah but there's the, yeah they're spread out all mm -hmm. over the place and it's hard to pin them down it's hard to get on them in one small specific spot because mm -hmm. you've got a deer on the end of a point here deer on the end of a point here and they can seemingly stand up and browse on acorns eat acorns yeah that is you know. right under the trees they want to be under what warren always talked about was like looking for that specific feed tree and he's, he says over and over again, he's like, you will know it when you find it. Even if there's acorns all over the ground, mm -hmm. they will gravitate towards a specific tree. And that big white oak that we found earlier today mm -hmm. was that tree. Like we right. found two dozen piles of droppings underneath the one tree and probably twice the amount of acorns underneath of that tree mm -hmm. that we found underneath, you know, of any this other tree ridge, on yeah. this whole mm -hmm. ridge. And even though there's acorns all over, all the deer that we saw tonight beeline yeah. straight. Coming straight to it and then we saw three does coming straight to that and then if we weren't talking right now i'm sure a small buck or something will be making the same move there's enough buck sign that yeah there's rubs that would make stuff sense. right yeah. in there so but that's a good tip listen to that podcast with warren womack he's a smart guy me and keith are going to get this doe taken care of and pack her out in the frame pack oh yeah that didn't take more than 45 or 50 minutes i'm pretty sure we got it all deboned and she's in one small game bag Probably about a mile walk out of here, mile gone out of here, and uh, there's ice waiting for us back at the back of camp to get some to get this meat on it. All right, Nick, what do you got here? We got a little potato and egg and fresh backstrap. We'll mix them up here. We made Keith killed his doe last night. We decided we got hungry this morning and we were going to throw it on the griddle. So, a little bit of hot sauce, a little action like that if you're into that kind of thing. I'm really into it. Mm. I, I say y'all better get in there on it. Thank you, Keith, for getting this dough down. Yeah, we really appreciate you. God, it tastes good. <laughs> it does. Had nothing but mountain houses and the occasional maybe Wendy's or. This is a gift. Well, I thank you. <laughs>